Well, hello there, it's Dr. Jim. Thank you for watching this video, I appreciate it. Been doing a lot of uh, research, a lot of reading, a lot of writing, and a lot of filming on numerous topics, um, a variety. And one topic that has always been extremely important for me is company culture. You know, what is your corporate culture like? What's your company culture like? What's what's the flavor of um, the place you work? You know, what's your workplace culture like? Is it good, bad, somewhere in the middle, mainly happy, mainly positive, creative, honest, open, you know, or full of conflict, or blah, blah, blah. And uh, the, the topic that I came up with for this video is creating a caring culture for your staff. And I believe the time is now <laughs> to do that because we've got a big problem in healthcare, in senior care, and really multiple job markets in America. The pandemic and this great resignation of people way back in 2009 both created this tidal wave of problems with finding good employees, finding any employees, um, training issues and expenses, um, hiring, recruiting, retaining. You know, all of these have been challenging. And now it seems like they are even worse. So the pandemic came along and it, we're still fe feeling the effects. We will feel the effects of this for years to come. I hate to say that. And I'm not saying it as a pessimist. I'm, I'm just saying it as a realist. But, you know, a lot of people have become very stressed out. And we've developed, you know, not on purpose, but it has a just taken place naturally, maybe. Cultures of stress, cultures of burnout and pessimism. And today, leaders, managers, supervisors, you have so much on your plate. I believe that, but you gotta make a little room on that plate and be very diligent about building a culture, a workplace culture that puts employees first and foremost. You should be building a culture of care, okay? How do you do that? Well, I really believe that you start by making your employees first, okay? So become the employer who has an employer-first attitude, and you're going to talk the talk, and you're going to walk the walk, and the only way you can do that is right here, mindset, your mindset is the most important thing. Putting employees first. Over your own needs, I believe leaders should be servants. I believe leaders should put their cares, needs, wants back here, secondary. Without your employees, you're not going to be a good leader. You need them. They need you, you need them. There are more of them than you, so you really need them more, okay? I mean, that's just, that's a numbers game, right? So how do you do this? You're gonna create this culture of care. You, number one, you create the mindset. My employees come first, every day, every day, in your car, going through the door, sitting down at your desk, whatever. What do my employees want? You have to know that. Because you're probably managing four to five generations of people now, right? Each generation is different. Each generation wants different things. Each generation expects <laughs> different things. You know how that goes. And um, they need different things. So develop this employee-first attitude mindset. It's very, very important. You don't have to do big things. You don't have to do expensive things. Show how you care by doing small things. My employees come first. Think small. You don't need large scale 
celebrations all the time to show your staff you care about them. Find small victories every day. In, in, in our line of work here, we celebrate small wins all the time. A, a win is a win. Create feel-good moments where you and your staff find purpose and meaning in what you're all doing. Um, don't forget to laugh. Don't forget to bring humor to the workplace. It really does diffuse a lot. And in, in my life, with my family, with my, my, my staff here, whether, you, whether you're talking about Collins Learning or CEU Academy, we find reasons to party. <laughs> That's just our generations, I guess. But we want to have a good time. We want to party and celebrate and feel good about what we do. Another way to develop this culture of care is to preach but practice flexibility. Flexibility is a key. Need and want for many employees. Today's employee isn't looking for the next perk that you're thinking about offering. They want room to breathe. They want flexibility. And you can empower your people by letting them take control more of their work-life balance. Kids are going to be sick. Parents are going to develop conditions. Offer them flex time, well-being time off, or more generous PTO, perhaps. Those th three things could really matter to somebody, okay? Build a better bridge between leadership and your employees. Lead by walking around. Lead by asking how you're doing today. Lead by putting a smile on your face. Lead by getting your managers and your employees on the same page, your supervisors. Have your management develop a mantra that they need to work as hard if not harder than staff that they're supervising or that they're managing. Here are some more employee first ideas. I think very practical things that you can add to your workplace culture. Encourage your employees to be themselves and to focus on their strengths. What do you have that makes you great? Because taking that from one employee and that from another employee, that's going to create something great. Provide as much positive feedback as you can daily. Be a servant leader yourself and lead by example. Encourage and practice respect for everyone, regardless of their generational differences or any other differences. Offer ways your staff can grow together, like small workshops or learning circles. People like to think or actually experience growth. I want to think I'm growing, I want to think I'm learning, but I, I actually want to as well. Work on gaining trust from each of your employees. Be as transparent as you possibly can as their leader. Always ask for your team's opinions, their ideas, their concerns. I know you're not going to implement everything. People like to be heard. Um, include your staff when you can in decision making when and where possible. Stay competitive with wages, salary, and benefits. Those do matter. Here are my final thoughts. Recruitment is rough. Hiring the right employee for the right position is always a challenge. Keeping good staff is a daily struggle. Although there are many ways to improve each and every one of these, one method I think stands out above the rest, and that is creating a caring culture where your employees are your top priority every day. I'm Dr. Jim. Keep coming back for more information. It's good to see you, and I hope to see you live <laughs> soon. Bye-bye. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for your time. If you'd like more information about a great online learning management system, 
with the most wonderful support, best in class support and partnering. Please look for the link to the website in the description. You'll love what you see.